Hey MW, I'm Melissa. And I'm Stephanie Carcace. And we're two sisters and the founders of Millennial Women. And your host of Millennial Women Talk. Vanessa Menchaka Vachmeister is a travel tech professional and the creator of the Wealth and Wanderlust platform, Wander Onwards. Vanessa is originally from Los Angeles, California, and she is a proud Chicana, and she has been living abroad for the last seven years. Today, she helps people build better lives inside the U.S. and abroad through her Move Abroad Masterclass and Financial Literacy Digital Products. She currently lives in Europe with her German husband and Italian cat. Everyone, welcome Vanessa. Vanessa, it is so fun to have you on Millennial Women Talk, the podcast. We are so excited you're here. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm calling you all the way from Munich. I'm in the middle of a snowstorm right now. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it. This is what the beauty of this virtual new reality is all about, right? Yep. It's about connecting people all over the world. This is so exciting. And thank you so much for taking the time. But we're going to dive right in because your life and what you've been able to do is really, really interesting. So we want to give you know our listeners a little bit of a background. So as a Latina woman from Los Angeles, you mentioned that many people like around you never expected you to get beyond five miles from where you grew up. However, you have taken your life and your career across oceans and continents with zero help from anyone but yourself, which is so inspirational and impressive. So let's get right into it. How did you do it? Um, I think it was just the sheer like ignorant belief that I could do whatever I set my mind to. Um, in high school, I really wasn't like okay friends. I was actually bullied quite a lot. And so in my mind, I was like, all right, whatever you have to do to get out of this horrible situation, do it. So first it was 3000 miles away. I didn't own closed toed shoes until then, but even that wasn't <laughs> far enough for me. I was like, okay, well, I don't really fit here in here at Boston. Um, so let's, let's keep going. And then I moved another 3000 miles to China. Uh, I was there for two years, then I moved to London for the last six years, and two two weeks before the pandemic uh, shutdowns happened, I moved to Germany. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. So you would say like your wanderlust was mainly in search of finding somewhere you fit in. What kind of fueled this wanderlust energy in you? Absolutely. I think I was just looking for somewhere that I belonged and I, I fit in. Um, I always gravitated towards people who were different than me. I really enjoy learning languages. I really enjoy like miming things to try to communicate to people that don't <laughs> speak my language, whether that's Spanish or English. Um, and the further I got, the more amazing uh, the opportunities were because I had like tacos with the ambassador to uh, Costa Rica in wow. China or uh, the ambassador to Germany saved me when I had some immigration issues uh, in London. I was just experiencing things that I would never have expected to encounter in my small city outside of Los Angeles city center. And it became addicting like a drug. So I just kept pushing it and trying to figure out where could I go next? That's amazing. Wow. I think it's like, you're kind of a lot of us, right, in our generation, we're just so into wanderlust and just wanting to explore mm -hmm. and discover. And I think what stops a lot of us is finances, right? Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. But then you're like, how do I support myself, right, in all of my wanderlust? So I would love to know, like, what was it for you that you kind of depended on to support this wanderlust in you? Girl, I did anything I needed to do to make a dollar. Um, <laughs> so I originally moved to China to teach English, but I realized I really didn't like teaching small children. So I quit my job, which then uh, ended up being that my visa was canceled while I was in China. So I don't know if you've heard about Chinese prisons, but you don't want to go to one. No. Um, so <laughs> I ended up taking out $3,000 from my bank account and paying to do a Chinese program in the center of Beijing. Um, and then I had $0. I was living on credit and I was like, okay, Vanessa, what can you do to make money? So yeah. I ended up getting salmonella, which removed any opportunities to make money in person with like acting or event management. And that's how I learned how to build online businesses in my bed while I was dying of salmonella. 
And I just started pitching people from my bed in my pajamas, which is probably why the pandemic worked out so well for my businesses, because <laughs> I know exactly what to do in this type of situation. Yeah. And that's how I pay for all of it. Everything wow. happens for a reason, yeah. right? My, our mom always says that it's like whatever crappy situation you're in is going to serve its purpose yeah. for some other time. So I'm really happy that you correlated that experience to now with the pandemic. That's crazy. Who knew that scared 21 year old Vanessa that was by herself in Beijing was building the skills that uh, almost 30 Vanessa today is now pushing across seas, across oceans, across countries. Um, my reach is over 300,000 people, according to my wow. analytics. So this has been a long time coming for me, preparing, learning these skills. Because I studied English in college. Like, wow. yes, I write for a living with my blog, but still the, the coding, the photography, the videography, all of that I learned on YouTube. And I love that, by the way, right? YouTube University, that's where yes. it's at. I, I love YouTube <laughs> University. It's great. <laughs> So I would love to know what was that first business that kind of, or what, you know, that, yeah, the first business that sort of triggered that idea and say, I think I can make money, you know, online. Mm -hmm. Like learning how to build websites on YouTube. I torrented a uh, JavaScript textbook online because, you know, China doesn't really play by the same internet rules that we do. Right. Um, and <laughs> that way I learned how to code. I learned how to integrate plugins and I started pitching people in the Beijing area uh, to allow, to hire me to build their websites. Um, and then I got a little bit sneaky with it. I learned how to outsource work and to hire really, um, talented people all over the world. So I would negotiate the contracts for like three or $4,000. I would pay someone else to do it. And I would just handle the, the client, uh, meetings and, and feedback loops. It. And that's how I started making like 80% profit. Wow. You are one you savvy are girl. Smart. I know. Like, <laughs> hold on. We need to like pick your brain a little bit more because you have some really good hacks. Okay. So yes. talking about money, right? Because I feel like a lot of people want to have the money to travel and stuff like that and or are in a rut right now because of the pandemic. So can you share with us some of like your money hacks on how you were able to like save money to do your business and to continue traveling? Do you have any tips and tricks? What are your hacks? <laughs> Absolutely. So my full-time job is actually for a travel tech company. I specialize in AP inter API integrations. So other people dialing into our technology, so our technology talking to one another. You need to build an MVP, a minimal viable product for whatever business you're trying to create. I don't care if that's a dog walking business or like a technical business, because that will force you to figure out how to build something with as little money and to still get someone to pay for it so you make a profit. So let's use a podcast as an example. The startup costs for a podcast could range from $0 because you could use a free tool like Anchor to let's say $100 because you need editing software or you need some sort of support. If you can make a podcast for $100 or less, how will people convert and buy things from your podcast or how do you get sponsorship so you can make money and then that's your mvp it takes a hundred dollars to make your your podcast profitable and that's what i did with my businesses i, I love, love that. that and you're now offering all of this in courses for women to learn right yeah so i run a bunch of free workshops about how to make money online about how to manage your um, personal finances i'm a personal finance um, and in addition to that, I have my um, How to Move Abroad a Masterclass that teaches you the end-to-end -end process of how to pick up your life in America and move it to Spain and still mm -hmm. earn normal money, still bring your children, still bring your cats and dogs. Um, and so I keep launching products. I'm telling my husband I'm no longer doing that. But <laughs> for me, it just comes as like second nature as a product manager to build things for people yeah. to solve their their problems. I love that. Yeah. And it's so important too, right? Yeah. Especially right now during this time, everybody's looking for, for a solution. Well, I think people are like, it reminds me of, you know, I want to talk a little bit about this because I know like our older generations, like they didn't, they had this sort of philosophy that like you have to work, make money, then travel, right? Like, having a quality of life um, at the same time of working, it was mm -hmm. like never simultaneous. It's like you have to work very, very hard, save your money, then 
you know, when you reach success is when you have fun. And here you are, you know, of what it seems to us and, and hearing you speak, like you're living that ultimate goal, you know, of having a super quality of life while doing the things you love and still being able to travel and explore and have adventures. So I just want to like, I know that that's really the goal for so millennial women, like for so many millennial women, what would you say is like the, like the top three things that allowed you to truly reach that goal? I think the first and foremost uh, issue you need to come to terms with is whose dream are you living out or trying to enact? Because mm -hmm. everybody and their mom told me that I was wasting my life, wasting my degree by going to China to teach English. But in reality, I needed the, that year, that two years to figure out who I was, wh what happens when I demolish my network and have to build it from scratch and what makes me happy. So first figure out are you living your life or someone else's dream life? Um, second, you need to figure out how to blend the things that you're passionate with, with living a normal adult life. So I'm not the wanderlust blogger girl that I once was when I was like 23. Now I have a, a full-time job, a pension plan, um, mm -hmm. but my job is client facing and in a consulting position. So my company actually pays me to go to Poland, to go to the United Kingdom, to, to travel to all these amazing places. So I was able to economize on my love for travel because I would just stay at the client site over the weekend um, with my um, full-time career ambitions. And that has been a real game changer for me. Yes. Um, and then thirdly, you need diversified streams of income. So I have my master classes, I have an Etsy store, I have my consulting services, and I have my full-time job. Oh, I have my investment portfolio as well. So wow. with all these options, I'm able to choose what's right for me. And this is what I encourage all women to explore on my platforms, on wanderonwards.co, because this will set you free. I love that. Oh my gosh. And I it's love that. truly like monetizing your skills. Right. Right. It's like, what are you really, really good at? What is it that you love and that you're really good at? And how can you monetize that skill? And I'm like, as I'm hearing you, it's like, that's, it's like all the different things that you do. It's just a different skill set that you have as a person and you just monetize it, right. which is so genius. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you balance everything, right? So you have all these amazing things, right? Because I feel like our generation is very multi-passionate. We yes. love so many things. And what I love about our generation the most is that we sort of take action, right? Like yourself, like, oh, I want to try this. I want to do mm -hmm. that, right? But at the end of the day, there are 24 hours in a day and we are a human being and we have to sleep and eat and do all the things that keep us mm -hmm. alive. How do you actually manage it all and find success in each line? of, you know, of careers that you do. It's all about balance. And some days you're going to push your podcast versus your master classes. Sometimes I focus on my investment portfolio versus um, my side hustles. I think understanding scalability and how that impacts your businesses is the very first step. So using my business as an example, this year was very product focused because I have time, I'm trapped inside my house, we're in our second lockdown here in Germany. I have the capabilities to build scalable projects that I won't have time to do once I'm flying all over Europe again for work. So right. by establishing those products now, establishing my marketing funnel so I don't have to hustle as hard on social media, on, on in-person events. My customers will find me through SEO and I'll funnel them through a very specific sales process. That all allows me to go skip to Bali and just hang out in a thong bikini, living my best life <laughs> while my products are being purchased uh, <laughs> by yeah. my followers, by people who need them. Um, and this year was a really like come to Jesus moment for me because building a move abroad masterclass during a global pandemic seemed crazy to everyone and their mom. But this was something that I'm very passionate about. I've been through 44 immigration um, experiences slash processes. This is something I'm an expert at and I don't think you can find someone that can beat me um, with this very specific niche. So I monetized it. And now I get to do what I love 
all the time because I do live classes for this master class as well, where I get to meet the people in person and like have really animated discussions about where they're moving. And I can only recommend it. I love oh, that. I love Thank that. you for being yeah. so open and honest. Because I yeah. feel like so many people online, especially when they're selling courses and stuff, it's like they give you the goods, but there's always like a lid on something. Right. And and I'm just so thankful that you're mm -hmm. so open. I think that this episode is giving so many people like those yeah, it's tidbits. Gonna help so them I hope a lot. you're paying attention. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like here like writing mental notes. Yes. <laughs> But um, I actually was reading one of your blog posts recently and you have this quote um, and it says, bet on yourself to swim, give yourself no choice but to swim. And it's amazing how well you at least float. I love that mm, so because good. so often, you know, women suffer from not being able to fully believe and trust in themselves. And a lot of people feed into this. Like they say a lot of these sexist comments, like you're going to travel and live alone as a woman. Is that safe? Or do you have a boyfriend or someone who's going to pay for this. It's like comments like these that just make us believe that we're not capable right. as a woman to explore this world. Like, have you ever felt like this? And, and just how did you deal with that? Girl, this happened to me yesterday. I was just oh my published God. in Time Magazine for, wow. yeah, it was huge. This is probably one of the biggest milestones of my career. Yeah. And of course, some crusty old man commented on my LinkedIn, my personal LinkedIn, saying that he disagreed that um, I advise my clients to save at least 10% of their monthly income. And he's like, that can't be enough. It has to be 20. And this oh. one little comment unraveled all of that confidence. I was getting calls from China, from my mom's friends. Um, why did this one crusty man unravel all of the amazing work I did mentally. Um, and so my husband and I had a little tough conversation about it. He, he knows that I am unfortunately a victim of caring too much about what other people think. Um, but it, it's surrounding yourself with people who are on your team, who will be honest with you about whether or not you're acting a little bit erratically, uh, not that I ever act erratically, um, <laughs> and, and kind of bring you back down to, to earth. Um, I think it's also so important to have women who are in the same line of fire as you. Um, right. I have uh, four girlfriends. We have a, a group chat. We met over quarantine, and we're always bouncing um, ideas off of one another because we have similar business models. And these girls, I, we're going to Portugal to like have a little girl's holiday with a villa mm -hmm. and like a boat um after quarantine obviously but without them i would be spiraling and not understanding my true value so surround yourself with people who can see how amazing you are even when you can't oh i love, I love that. that that's, oh, that's so good. advice oh and what's next for you now i mean i know i know this trip coming up and i know you're <laughs> in a second lockdown but you know in terms of your life and your business like What's next? What do you see yourself doing, you know, in 2021 and beyond? So in one week and one day, I am launching my financial fluency course. It Ooh. is a six week end to end personal finance uh, money masterclass. It's essentially the class we all should have taken in high school. Um, it'll talk about <laughs> like no math econ, how to deal with six figure debt, how to invest which I know is a big question for a lot of young women, um, especially now that we have a little bit of money to, to play with in our careers. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is inspired by my Latino heritage as well. Um, so I have like very specific references from my culture, um, from things I've learned around the world. It is globally relevant. Um, so I talk about uh, the that. Euro, the pound, the dollar, what tax advantaged accounts are in each area. And yeah, I can't wait to sleep uh, after I'm done with it, but we're almost there. <laughs> I That's love amazing. It. That sounds like an amazing, amazing course. You are doing incredible things mm -hmm. and maybe we'll hang out someplace in the world, <laughs> hopefully soon. But this was so great. Thank you so much. Yeah, really. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for your time and, and really for being so open and honest. We surely appreciate it. And so does our audience because this is going to help them tremendously. So thank you so much for being on our show today. Thank you. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. And if any of your audience members want to reach out and DM me, I read every single comment. I read every single DM. Um, I'm here to be a resource to everyone because 
I felt like I didn't have that um, yeah. back in the day when I was just like this lost girl trying to figure out who she was. Um, so if I can be in any way helpful to anyone, um, let me know. I'm here. Oh, I love awesome. that. Thank you so Thank much, you. Vanessa. No we problem. so appreciate it. Have a wonderful night, ladies. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. You can follow Vanessa and learn more about her and her resources on Instagram at Wander Onwards. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. This helps us bring you resourceful conversations just like this to you every single week. We encourage you to continue on with the conversation. Keep being the strong, amazing woman that you are and never forget to live inspired. Until next time, always love Melissa and Stephanie Carcace.